Hey everyone, welcome to Pink Tutu Tarot. So we're gonna look at how your boss sees you, what they think of you and your potential in the workplace. So I've got three cards here for you, three readings. You get to choose which one feels right to you. Group one, your card is the Seven of Pentacles. Now hold that there for a sec so you can get a good look. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, group two, your card is the King of Cups. And group three, your card is the Wheel of Fortune. All right. So all you have to do now is go down into the description box, click on the timestamp for the reading you want to watch, and it will take you straight there. Thanks, y'all. Hey, group one. All right, we're today we're taking a look at um, how your boss sees you, what they think of you. So your initial card here is the Seven of Pentacles. I'm going to leave that there while I pull some more cards, and then we'll jump into your reading. All right. Your first card is the Six of Pentacles. The Empress reversed. The Knight of Swords. And one more that is an advice card for you. And your advice card is the Seven of Pentacles reversed. Interesting. All right, so two Seven of Pentacles, that's important. We also have a Major Arcana here, um, also important. So give me just a second. I'm just going to take the cards in and listen for some initial messages for you from your spirit team. Um, before I do, I just want to mention if you're looking for a personal reading, one that's just about you, not a general reading like this, you can check my website, Pink. 22tarot.com and see what's available there. Um, there's also a link down in the description box, but otherwise, I just hope you enjoy this reading. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up or drop me a comment just so I can know that our energies are connecting. All right. Thanks for that. And give me just a sec while I listen and hear what they want to tell you before we get started with the cards. All right. The first thing the Spirit's telling me is that you're very talented at what you do. They're saying you're very gifted, you're very talented, you have a lot of knowledge, but you also have like this innate instinct um, when it comes to your work that not everyone has, because it's not just about what you do and what you know, it's like this um, gut ability to read a room, read a situation, understand what's really going on or what what a situation or a project needs um, and that's not something that necessarily can be taught it's just kind of in you your boss recognizes this on some level they may not put it in those exact words but they recognize that you have really strong instincts in addition to your your um your ability to to do the work of course uh, but <laughs> they're telling me that you, you are very critical of yourself. You don't give yourself enough credit. That's coming from spirit. That's not coming from your boss. I, I don't know if your boss thinks that or not. We'll find out when we get into these cards. But, they're, but spirit's telling me that you're much too critical of yourself in the workplace. You don't give yourself enough credit for how good you are and how much you know and, and for those very instincts that you have, that your boss does notice, you don't, you don't recognize that. You don't recognize it, um, and you should, you should. So kind of tuck that away just as something to know about yourself. But let's get a little deeper into what your boss thinks of you. 
So your initial card here is the Seven of Pentacles. Let me just listen what they want to say about this card. Um, they're telling me your boss thinks that you are very patient, that you're very skilled, that you have lots of potential to do a, to do a really great job, to have a very strong career, to make a big impact on either the company you work for, the work you do, the industry you're in. You have a ton of potential and it's, they're saying, um, your boss sees this kind of growing by the day. They recognize how they're given. This is how they're giving it to me. How good you are, but more importantly, how good you are going to be down the road. So where you may feel like, oh, I'm not good enough at this, or I'm not good enough at that, or your boss is recognizing that while you still have more to learn, you have huge, they see huge potential in, um, in your future. They really think that you will grow and learn quickly and you will expand very quickly and rise up in the ranks equally quickly. That's their impression of you and that's what their thinking is about you and your, your potential here. Okay. But they're also recognizing they feel like you're very patient about it. You're not in some ways, you might not be ambitious enough. You know, like a little, just that tiniest little spark of impatience can sometimes motivate a person to do more. Patience is a good thing. Your boss sees that in you, that you're calm, you're patient. You don't rush things. But I'm also getting this feeling of a little tiny bit of impatience wouldn't hurt your uh, wouldn't hurt your career right there's just that little bit of ambition not that you don't have ambition but it's this impatience like oh i really want it but i really want it now you don't want too much of that because then you end up um kind of going off a cliff sometimes because you work too you try too hard but your boss would like to see just a tiny bit more of that so keep that in mind. All right. So the first card here, we've got the six of pentacles. They see you as very even keeled, very balanced. You're good at collaborating. You're good at working with others. You're good on a team. You're good at taking credit and giving credit, which is a really good quality. In other words, you don't always take credit for good things that happen, but you also um, give credit to others when it's due. So um, it's a very balanced quality. They see you as someone who is very valuable in the workplace, meaning they recognize that you, your worth. They recognize your worth. They do want to keep you around. So if you have any doubts about that, about whether or not um, you are valued, I'm absolutely getting a yes on your valued in the workplace by your boss. Okay, so your next card here is the Empress reversed. Ah, uh, okay. They're telling me your boss looks at you at, as if your boss has a lot of faith in you. They really have a high respect for you. They don't think you feel the same about yourself. So we did mention that earlier that, that um, spirit was coming in to say you're a little bit too critical of yourself. Similar message coming in here. Um, it's, your boss feels that you play a little small, a little bit small. You're not ambitious enough. You don't um, promote yourself enough. And it may come from any, you know, may come from any number of reasons on your end, but your boss looks at it as a lack of confidence. That may be true, it might not be. It's just from their point of view. But they would like to see more initiative from you. They would like to see you speak up more. They would like to see you have just that spark of ambition, um, in, just the tiniest bit of impatience, like, oh, I really want to do a good job. I really want to make a difference. I really want to put myself out there. 
you don't want to overkill on it, but, but they're really feeling like you're a bit of a shrinking violet. Uh, they see you with having, again, tons of potential. They recognize that in you. They want you to recognize that in yourself as well. I feel like if you had a little more confidence, you would put yourself out there more and there would be no stopping you. Interesting. All right, so then we have the Knight of Swords. Um, your boss thinks you're very good when you have a specific project or goal in front of you. When you have something very tangible to focus your efforts on, you go after it and you get it done. You do a great job. You, you complete all the tasks and you do it in your own way, meaning you add your own flavor to it, which it comes back to these instincts that you have, right? But <laughs> there's a but here. When you don't have a specific task, they don't see that same drive in you. And again, that comes down to, in their opinion, um, a lack of confidence or just a dip in your confidence. They don't see you as somebody who is not confident at all, but that you, they want to build up your confidence. That's the truth. They want to build you up because they see the potential in you. They see that long-term, oh, you could really, really make a difference. You could really do very, very well. Um, to have this Empress card here is huge potential, but it's in reverse. It's, it's, almost there. So, you know, build up your confidence if you can. Try to work on that. Try to um, take on a little bit more initiative if you can, because your advice card here is a seven of pentacles reversed. And all that's not to reverse all the wonderful qualities they see with you in this upright seven of pentacles. But like we said, just that spark of impatience, that little tiny spark of ambition and motivation where um, you're not just waiting for promotions to happen. You're not just waiting to get noticed. You are actively pursuing it. You're actively pursuing it. So consider that, you know, continue on with all the wonderful qualities that you have. Again, they think you have this gut instinct. You have this inner knowing when it comes to what you do that, that really can't be taught. It's just an instinct. And you have great work ethic. You're good at what you do. You're very, very talented and gifted. There is some very good focus here, especially when you're given a specific project or goal, a target. When you don't have a goal or a target, try to create one for yourself to keep that momentum up and just work on your confidence because they see great things in you. But the confidence, that's got to come from inside you. All right, Group 1, I hope that helps. Hope it gives you just a little bit of insight into how your boss sees you and your potential. Thank you so much for being here, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, Group 2. So today we're looking at how your boss you know, feels about you, what they think of you, and your potential. Your initial card here is the King of Cups. I'm going to set that here and pull some additional cards for you and then we'll jump into your reading your first card is the four of swords then you have the three of cups The Nine of Swords, and one more as an advice card for you. Okay. And the advice card is the Fool. All right. 
Okay, give me just a second. I'm just going to take these cards in and I'm going to listen for some initial messages for you from Spirit. Before I do, I'd just like to mention if you would like a personal reading, um, one that's just about you, not a general reading like this, you can check out my website, pink22tarot.com and see what's available there. There's also a link down below in the description box. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this reading. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up or drop me a comment. Just lets me know that our energies are connecting and that the reading is resonating with you. Okay, so thanks for that. Now bear with me one sec while I give this, I give this a listen. Hold on. Okay, the first thing they're telling me is that your boss thinks that you are very mature in the workplace, regardless of your age. You may be, you may be younger, you may be older, but they, you have a very diplomatic um, way about you. Yeah, diplomatic's the best word. They're saying you're kind, but you're firm. You know how to handle difficult situations as well as difficult people. You handle them both equally well. You also handle people in a nice, friendly manner, you know, when it's not a situation. Uh, they're saying you make the workplace better for being in it. Just your presence, your personality, your demeanor. You're very calm. You're very kind. You're very commanding. You have a very commanding presence, but not in a way that is off-putting to others, that makes them feel threatened, which is wonderful. Okay, so let's jump into the cards. Your initial card here being the King of Cups. Yes, it's it's exactly what Spirit was saying. You are, um, you have emotional constancy. That's what they just said to me, emotional constancy. You don't get rattled very easily. You don't get shaken up very easily. Whatever the situation is, it's like you are the voice of reason. You're the voice of calm. You're the voice of diplomacy in the room. And you know how to take a situation and how do I put that? You know how to take a situation that is uh, like fragmenting, falling apart. You know, when, when things start to go wrong, you know how to pull all the pieces together and level it up bring everything up to a higher level. Uh, it's a beautiful skill. They do recognize this in you. They see leadership qualities in you that they don't see in everyone. Because regardless of someone's ability, ability to do this skill or that skill, leadership qualities are very rare. True leadership qualities where you help people become better through your own presence, through your own encouragement, through diplomacy, um, through your own example. And you do that. So whether you're in a leadership position now or not, your boss does see you as someone that has those leadership qualities and that very calm, emotional constancy that brings some stability to the workplace, especially when things get a little rocky or shaky. Okay. All right. So your first card here, we have the four of swords. It's like, let me just hear what spirit wants to say. Again, they're talking about you being calm. It's very hard to get a rise out of you. That's what they just said. It's very hard to get a rise out of you. Even when people are poking at you or poking at your ideas or poking at what you do or a situation you're involved in, where other people might take offense, might get rattled, might, you know, pick up their sword and want to fight back. It's like you take a breath, you listen, you take it in, and you hold your words until it's appropriate, until you have the appropriate words to present to them. Interesting. It's a skill. It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's diplomacy, but it's also this ability to separate your own ego from a situation. 
It's interesting. Interesting that they see that in you. That's a really cool quality. <laughs> they don't have that. <laughs> um, okay. So your next card here is the Three of Cups. Um, your boss doesn't, this is what they just said to me, so you're going to have to bear with me to phrase. Your boss doesn't see you as someone who is just dry as bones. That's what they just said. So see you as someone who is just dry as bones. Maybe there's somebody here watching who works with bones. I don't know. And maybe that's just their way of um, throwing a pun in there. But they don't see you as someone who is just dry as bones and always diplomatic and always being, um, you know, the, the adult in the room. They see you enjoying the company of others in the workplace as well, whether it's just like before a meeting, the chit chat that goes on, or, um, you know, if you're in the workplace, like in the hallways, uh, conversations you have about the, you know, the weekend or their families. You have a way of connecting with others on a personal level and having them feel like they are the only one in the room. And they're telling me they see this in you socially, you know, when there's social conversations happening. But also when it has to do with work, you have a way of looking at people and listening to them and responding to them in such a genuine, authentic way. That number one, they feel very heard. They feel listened to. They feel important. And they feel like they matter. They feel like they're the only one in the room and that it's just the two of you, if that makes sense. Beautiful qualities, beautiful qualities. All right, so your next card here is the Nine of Swords. Now, give me just a sec. I just want to hear what they want to say about this. Okay, they're telling me your boss sees you as somebody who does Okay, number one, you work too much. You put in, either you put in too many hours or you work too hard on certain projects. Almost to the point where you beat them to death a little bit. So this would be their one criticism of you is that you overwork either yourself and or you overwork um, certain projects that you work on. It's, it's a little bit like perfectionist energy, but it goes, it feels even beyond that. Like it's not wanting to release something. And there is, I'm getting this slight undercurrent of insecurity there. Um, like everyone is looking at you and you feel the need to be perfect. So you work on something and then you work on it harder and then you double check it and then you check it again and you check it and check it. They see this in you. They see you overworking things, not wanting to release them, wanting them to be more than perfect. I hope that makes sense. Um, they're grateful that you do a good job, that you pay attention to detail, but there comes a time when you have to let things go. You have to release it and move on to the next thing. This is their one criticism of you is that you, you will work something to death, really, instead of releasing it and moving on to the next thing. So consider that, you know, in the workplace, just maybe uh, try to, you know, get it to a point where you're comfortable with it, but then release it, stop looking at it, move on to the next thing. All right, so the advice from spirit is the fool. All right. What they're telling me is take a few more chances in the workplace. Your demeanor is wonderful. Your diplomacy is fantastic. Your ability to build rapport and connect with others, fantastic. But you don't take very many chances in the workplace. This is why you will overwork something and not want to give it up. This is why you will check something to death or rewrite it or um, you know, add one more column to the spreadsheet because take a few more chances, let go a little bit more, go out on a limb every once in a while. Number one, it will surprise them. And number two, it will stretch you just a bit because what I'm getting is that you're a little bit too comfortable in where you are. 
you're a little too comfortable and it's time for you to stretch. It's time for you to take a few chances and put yourself out there just a little bit more. That doesn't mean be controversial or, or you know, do anything crazy, but take some calculated risks when it comes to your work. Try it. See how it goes because it feels very strongly like your boss would react very, very well to this. They already trust you. They already respect you. They just want to see a little bit more trust in yourself here, which is what's missing here with this Nine of Swords. All right, Group 2, I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a little bit of insight into how your boss sees you and your potential. So thank you so much for being here, and have a great day, y'all. Bye-bye. Hey, Group 3. All right, today we're going to take a look at how your boss sees you what they think of you and your potential. So your initial card here is the Wheel of Fortune. Beautiful card. But let's get the rest of the cards down and see the full picture before we jump into the reading. The first card is the Knight of Cups. Then we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. A page of Swords. And one more as an advice card for you. Okay, and your advice card is the Emperor in reverse. Okay, give me just a sec. I just like to take the cards in and I listen for some initial messages for you from Spirit. Before I do, I just want to mention if you would like a personal reading, if you'd like a reading that's just about you and your situation, not a general reading like this, you can check out my website at pink22tarot.com. There's a link down below as well. You can see what's available there. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this reading, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up or drop me a comment down below. It helps me know that our energies are connecting and that you're resonating with the reading, so thank you for that. All right, now give me just a sec while I give it a listen. Hold on one second. All right, initially... Um, there's there's kind of a two-sided message here from your boss. One is your boss thinks you could do anything. You're one of those people who, um, whatever you take on, you do it well. Whatever you tackle, you give it your everything. You're a very quick learner. You know how to incorporate what you learn and put it into practice very quickly. You're very good at that. On the other side, though, your boss doesn't always feel like you enjoy what you do. <laughs> they think you're good at it, but you don't seem to be enjoying it very much, in their opinion, or at least not all the time. Hmm. Let's see what else they want to say about that. Again, they're saying you could do anything. They see with somebody who could do anything, anything you wanted to do. The, the, the words that come that are coming up here from your boss are, you could do anything. Why are you doing this if it's not making you happy? And if it is making you happy, if you do enjoy your job, why doesn't it seem like it? So that's something for you to consider. It may be that you love your job and you just so focus on it that it looks like you're not enjoying it, that you look maybe stressed out or bored or uninterested. You might just look that way and you're not at all. 
um, in which case it just helps to be aware of that. Or if you're really good at your job, but you don't love it, um, that's something to think about too, because you could do something that you love and be good at that as well. So it's from your boss's point of view. Not that they want to lose you, but they do see you as a person, not just as like a robot who does work. You know what I mean? Okay. So jumping into the cards, your first card is the wheel of fortune. And what they're showing me on this card is all these images on this wheel. This is a little bit different wheel than we normally see. But again, they're telling me you could do anything. You could pick a career off of the wheel and do it well. Learn what you need to learn and go after it and you'd be great at it. You're just one of those, like a Jack or Jill of all trades. You could do anything you set your mind to. That's how your boss sees you. But right now they're showing me that you come across as someone who you come across as someone who gets bored easily. Um, that you're not always invested in what you're doing. So you might be very good at it, but it's lacking some enthusiasm from their point of view, okay? And, and what they're giving me is that if you had enthusiasm for what you were doing, if you loved what you were doing and you still had the, you know, the work ethic that you have, um, because you are, you are, they're telling me you're like a sponge. You could do anything. If you were also enthusiastic, this wheel of fortune would be like the wheel of luck. For you you would just you'd be spinning straight to the top of the wheel right now they're giving me and you're kind of hovering somewhere around the middle you're not low you're not high you're just hovering around the middle and it's they feel like it's coming from a lack of interest interesting okay so your first card here is the knight of cups they're telling me you came into this work really loving what or appearing to really love what you were doing. You uh, gave the impression that this was important to you or that you wanted this job, that you loved it, that this was your whatever, your life's passion maybe. You were very, very good at selling yourself and you have not let them down in that regard because you do a great job. But just like the Knight of Cups, it's, it's a lot of it is enthusiasm for the sake of selling yourself, um, you know, in the job interview, you know, to get the job. And then you quickly lost interest. That's their opinion. That's their opinion may or may not be true right so it's just someone else's perspective and if it's not true remember you can you can you can work on that right but the next card here is the nine of cups this is the card of ah you got what you wanted then you didn't want it anymore so your boss is kind of wondering what do you want what do you need to be in love with your job again because they don't want to lose you that's the truth they see you as somebody who's very valuable, very skilled. Um, you have a great work ethic. You take, they just said, you take on challenges with a gusto. You go after it. You just don't seem to love it. And they want you to love your job. <laughs> they do. And not everybody does. That's just reality. But your boss, for, you know, to their credit, doesn't just want you to do the work. They also want you to enjoy it. They want you to, because when you enjoy your work, when you enjoy your job and you love what you do, you stick around. You're happier in the workplace. But they see in you that you've lost that. You've lost some of that enthusiasm that you had in the beginning. It's almost like you 
your goal was getting the job. And then once you got it, eh, now what? <laughs> Interesting. All right, your next card here is the Page of Swords. Your boss really wants you to learn something new, something that you love. They want you to put yourself out there in a way that maybe you're not an expert, which is okay. They know you can learn. They do think of you as a sponge in that they're confident. Whatever you take on, you could learn to do it and you would do it well. They're really wanting you to take on something new, learn something new, if that's possible in your workplace, that you enjoy, that has you feeling enthusiastic again. They feel like you need a new goalpost. You need a new um, finish line in a way. You need something else to light that fire in you again. They feel like this is gonna come from learning something new because you're very good at it and you seem to want to do new things. Now, in your workplace, who knows, right? Uh, that will vary for all of you. Some of you, there's gonna be obvious opportunity. For some of you, there isn't. But you can take classes outside of work and up-level your skills. The trick is finding an area of your job that interests you, that really you can fire up that passion again. They really want you to, they really want you to do that. Fire up your passion, fire up your enthusiasm. Um, sh like show them that you love your job again, because they feel like that's kind of, um, that's what's missing. You have the full package. You really do. The Wheel of Fortune, you have the full package. But they feel like you're bored. And maybe you are, right? All right, so your advice card is the Emperor Reverse. Let me just a sec. I just want to make sure I hear what they're saying about this card, so bear with me one sec. There, I mean, Spirit's saying just that. Let go and try something new. Um, you don't have to be at the top of your game. You don't have to be the expert all the time. Learn something new. Your boss wants you to. The boss knows that you can. You know, the Page of Swords is a student, someone willing to learn something new, someone who's excited to learn something new. Turn this Nine of Cups in reverse, turn it right side up so that you're loving where you are again. You're getting what you need and want from your work. With the Emperor upright, this is, this is somebody who's got it all, who is um, very good at their job, but also very static in, um, in their position, right? There's nowhere to go but down from the Emperor, you know? So they, they hold on to their power and they stay put. With the Emperor reverse, the advice really is don't allow yourself to be so static. Stretch yourself, put yourself out there, try something new, learn something new, figure out where your passion is because you may be feeling a, la a lack of passion, but worse than that, other people are recognizing it. Maybe it's not worse. Maybe it's equally bad. I don't know. But if you're not passionate about what you do, is there a way to reignite that passion? Or to find a new passion within your role? So that you don't get static, so that you don't get stuck. And so that your boss knows that you want to be there. <laughs> you know, never hurts. All right, group three, I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a little bit of insight that, um, that you needed to hear. Thank you so much for being here, y'all, and have a great day.